want to introduce myself. I'm Linda Carter. I will be your presenter, presenter for the day. And it's a pleasure to have you participate in this introduction to clinical trials. A little bit about myself. I've been in industry for a little over 10 years. I came into clinical uh, trials actually by accident. I was a trauma nurse in the ICU and in the emergency room. And Johns Hopkins was looking for somebody to coordinate a national trial on costs and trauma. And a friend of mine told me about this opportunity. I spoke with them, and I started working for them. And it was my first experience with clinical trials, and I was hooked. I loved it. It was very exciting and very interesting. And so I've been in clinical trials ever since. I've worked on small investigator-initiated clinical trials as a clinical research coordinator. I've worked as a CRA or a clinical research associate um, for a CRO company. That's that mid-level company in between the sponsor and the clinical site. We'll talk about them later on today. I've also worked for major pharmaceutical and vaccine companies, not only as a CRA, but also as a trial manager and lead for many of their programs and program managers. I have worked with many clinical research associates. I've hired them. I've trained them. And I've also um, helped them get involved in various clinical trials and improving their skills. So teaching and training has always been a part of my profession, and so I'm thrilled to be able to introduce you to clinical trials and give you an overview. This is, in fact, an overview of clinical trials. There is so much that you can talk about at clinical trials. It's somewhat difficult to give you an abbreviated version, but I'm going to do my very best. So the objectives for this particular class are that I hope that you'll be able to discuss the historical events and importance of good clinical practice in clinical research, be able to describe the different phases of drug development, and be able to differentiate between drug development and medical device development. I don't know if any of you have ever seen advertisements asking for volunteers to participate in a clinical trial, or if you yourself have actually volunteered to participate in a clinical trial. So I'll just I'll ask you informally, using your emoticons, if you've ever participated in a clinical trial, can you give me a green check mark? If you haven't ever participated in a, in a clinical trial, um, give me a red X. Okay, so no one's been participating in a clinical trial. Well, I live just outside of the Boston area. We're one of the center focal points for many clinical trials, and there's always advertisements for different clinical trials. At the end of this presentation, I'm actually going to provide with you a website, which you may or may not be familiar with, clinicaltrials.gov, which actually gives you information about all the clinical trials that are going on, who's running them, what their therapeutic area is, and this is an area that you can visit for interest or for information. So why do we do clinical research? Well, like anything else, clinical research starts with a good idea. And there are a lot of good ideas out there. But like many ideas, it takes a lot of time and a lot of money to see them through to the end. And so I'll put this idea in your head, and I'd like for you to be thinking about it because we're going to come to this a little bit later on. Give it some thought. Maybe you know the answer to this question. Maybe you've read something about this, about the amount of time that it takes for a new drug to become available in the pharmacy or to be prescribed by your physician. Think about how much time you think it takes as well as how much money you might think it takes. You might be surprised. This is kind of a timetable for you to give you a brief overview of exactly what drug development and what time it takes. It's anticipated that a new drug can take anywhere from 10 to 15 years from the time that it's discovered in the bench or lab science to the time that it's actually been approved by the FDA for sale and for marketing. 10 to 15 years, that's a long, long time. And how many ideas or how many compounds do you think it takes before one of those actually gets approved by the FDA? Again, a lot of ideas. I've had many different people participate in my clinical presentations who have come from a variety of different places within industry and within pharmaceutical and device. I've had several people who've been actually lab scientists and were directly involved in this compound or product search. And they've told me they're, what they've experienced is right in line with what the industry reveals, which is there's approximately 100 to 200 compounds a week that are looked at. They're just looked at. They're not de determined whether or not they're going to be used, but they go through that many compounds, that many molecular units before they actually 
can decide on a few of them that might make it through clinical trials and might be a good drug to develop. And the reason why you develop a good drug or the reason why companies would develop a drug is predominantly driven because of how the need for the drug or the, the particular population, but not always. And I know one of our participants has experience with orphan-type drugs. I'm, I'm not going to spend uh, time talking about orphan drugs, but orphan drugs are an example of a small population that would use a 